Before you start your installation, carefully review both the printed instructions and this presentation all the way through. Then follow the step-by-step -step instructions and pro tips presented for a successful installation that ensures the full benefits and outstanding performance of Thermatrue pre-hung door systems. Also, contact your local building a code official or agency for any specific code requirements in your area. Next, check all packages to be sure you have all the parts indicated in the unit installation instructions that are needed to complete the installation of your new Thermatrue pre-hung door system. Here are the tools and materials you will need for this installation. A tape measure, a six foot level, a small level, a framing square, string or twine, several tubes of elastomeric or polyurethane sealant, and a caulking gun, a step ladder, a small pry bar, a hammer, safety glasses, a utility knife, gloves, a hammer tacker or staple gun, a nail gun or brad nailer, an electric drill or screw gun, two screwdrivers, one Phillips and one flat blade, wood shims, a putty knife, and a small piece of fiberglass insulation. You will also need brick mold or an exterior trim if it is not included with your unit. Use number 8 by 2.5 inch or 3 inch screws. And be sure to always use exterior grade screws to prevent rusting. Optional items that will further improve an installation include a Thermatrue sill pan kit and a flexible flashing product which can further ensure the watertight integrity of any entry or patio door installation and that may actually be required by code in some areas. Now we are ready to begin. For step one, first check the width and height, measuring the size of the frame, width and height, not the brick mold. Next, remove the cleats and packaging, but keep the door fastened closed with the transport clip and do not remove the transport clip or open the door until instructed to do so later in step 7. When preparing the opening, there are a number of things to check. First, determine if the subfloor is level and solid. You must provide a flat, level, clean, bearing surface so the sill may be caulked and sealed to the opening. If the subfloor is not completely level, then scrape clean, sand, or fill is required. If required, shim the subfloor for floor covering clearance, and if shimming, be sure to caulk under the shim. Then make sure the opening is the correct size. Check it against the door frame size now before installation. The opening should be unit frame height plus one half inch, and unit frame width plus one half to three quarter inch. Then check all corners with a framing square to be sure the opening is square. And double check by comparing diagonal measurements. Any problems you find here in step 2 should be fixed and corrected prior to proceeding on to step 3. Next, check to be sure framing and walls are plumb. Use a 6 foot level and check both sides of the opening both ways. Also, check to be sure the wall surfaces around the opening are in the same plane. We do this by performing a string test for plumb, by attaching string diagonally across the opening from the outside. The string should gently touch. If it does not, the opening is out of plumb by twice that distance and needs to be corrected. Then, flip the string over itself to check both planes. We also recommend the use of a water-resistive barrier applied to the exterior sheathing, OSB or otherwise and the use of an adhesive or flexible flashing to seal it. The water-resistive barrier should be cut in the opening following the manufacturer's instructions, with the head of the flap taped up to be sealed later in step 11. Flashing material should be applied in an overlapping manner as shown here, always working from the bottom up, following the manufacturer's instructions. Now, here is the proper procedure for the installation of a Thermatrue sill pan, which we recommend. First, dry fit the sill pan in the rough opening, following the instructions furnished with the sill pan. Check the center section for proper length, and if necessary, cut with a hacksaw or tin snips. 
be sure to allow at least two inches of overlap at the joints. Also note, for openings less than 52 and a half inches, only one center section is required. Cut as necessary as described earlier. When using a sill pan, place three very large beads of caulk on the subfloor at the opening, using only elastomeric or polyurethane sealant, running beads the full width of the opening. Place the right and left sill pans tightly against the sides of the rough opening. Then liberally coat the overlapped areas and the recessed areas of the end pieces with the PVC cement that is provided. Hold pieces together long enough to ensure a good bond. Keep in mind that cooler temperatures will require longer bonding times. And for added protection, spread a bead of caulk along the glue joints. To prevent air infiltration, run a bead of caulk along the lower interior edge of the sill pan. Additional caulking could affect the performance of the sill pan. And remember, do not caulk the bottom of the sill if you are using a sill pan. For installations without a sill pan, place very large beads of caulk on the subfloor at the opening using only elastomeric or polyurethane sealant, running beads the full width of the opening. And, to avoid callbacks due to leaks, use an entire tube of caulking to seal between the sill and subfloor. Next, lay the door unit on edge or its face, so that the bottom of the sill can be caulked. Then, place very large beads of caulk across the full width of the sill, and along the bottom surface of the jams and brick mold. If a sill extender is used, Place a large bead of caulk at the junction of the extender and the sill approach. Another important point, apply sealant to the back side of the brick mold around the perimeter of the door. A 1 half inch to 5 eighths inch bead of elastomeric or polyurethane caulk here is absolutely essential. Now it is time to place the unit in the opening. Lift the unit up with the top edge tilted away from the opening. Then center the unit and place the sill down onto the caulk beads or sill pen and tilt into place. For all door configurations, note hinge locations and mark those locations on both jam faces near the door surface. Pre-drill 1 8 inch diameter holes for screw placement. Use a countersink bit to help conceal the screw heads. Then, install screws in center hole locations on both frames to temporarily secure the unit in place. Do not fasten through the brick mold. Use number 8 by 2.5 inch or 3 inch screws. And be sure to always use exterior grade screws to prevent rusting. Next, plumb the hinge side jam both ways using a 6 foot level. Then, place remaining screws through the hinge side jam into the stud at each location as seen here. For side light units, fasten the jam on the hinge side of the door and do not drive screws in completely at this time. For double door and hinged patio units, fasten the jam on the fixed or passive side of the unit first. For both single and double doors, place a screw at each hinge location so that shims can be placed behind the hinges. The screws will keep the shims from falling down while adjustments are being made. Also, do not drive screws completely in at this time. Next, leaving the door fastened and closed with the transport clip, shim above the screws behind each hinge location and between the jam and opening. When completed, recheck the hinge jam to ensure that it is still plumb and straight using a 6 foot level. Then, finish by driving screws tight. Middle first, then top, and bottom last. Next, check the weather strip margin and its contact to the door surface. Make frame adjustments so the weather strip contacts the door surface equally at the top, middle, and bottom, and even 3 8 inch to 1 half inch when fully closed. Then secure the jam with number 8 by 2.5 inch or 3 inch screws through the pre-drilled holes at the top and bottom. Do not finish driving the screws tight at this time. Now from the swing side of the door, shim above the screw locations and make adjustments so the margins between the door and frame are even top to bottom. 
For double door units, you will also be making adjustments that affect the alignment, margins, and weather strip contact between the doors. We will cover these and the Astrogal slide bolt details later in step 10 at other configurations. Recheck everywhere for plumb and square and weather strip contact. Also, finish driving screws tight at this time. Now it is time to open the door to complete the jam fastening and to install the hardware. First remove the transport clip, then open and close the door to check for smooth operation. With the door open, check to see that the long hinge screws were pre-installed. If not, drill 1 8 inch diameter pilot holes and install the number 10 by 2 and a half inch hinge screws provided to anchor the door frame and to prevent sagging. Then install the adjustable strike plate. Now drill 1 8 inch diameter pilot holes and place the two number 7 by 2 inch screws provided through the strike plate mounting holes. Adjust strike in and out for proper latching and tighten the mounting screws. Your door system may have an adjustable threshold cap. When properly adjusted, it should be snug and slightly difficult to pull a dollar bill out from under the door when it is closed without tearing. This dollar bill test should be performed at each adjustment screw location. After adjusting the threshold cap, check to be sure that the weather strip is flush with the top of the cap and trim as necessary. Next, and only for in-swing door units, now install the corner seal pads. Corner pads for all in-swing doors are applied as shown here. Apply sealant at the joint where the threshold cap meets the door jam. Remove the self-stick paper from the corner seal pads and apply to the door jam, with the bottom lined up evenly with the top of the threshold cap. When correctly installed, the tab is always on top and the narrow part is on the bottom. The bottom is the same width as the threshold cap to help with alignment of installation. We also recommend that you provide additional frame anchoring. And if the local building code requires that a pre-hung door unit be installed in accordance with the high velocity hurricane zone rating, refer to the HVHZ details in Appendix A included with your installation instructions, or visit www.thermatrue.com for more information. Now, for additional frame anchoring on single doors with side lights, shim above the mole post or jams that separate the door and side lights. Then, pre-drill pilot holes and screw through the frame into the header adjacent to the shims. For additional frame anchoring on double doors, after following steps 1 through 5, mark the slide bolt hole locations. Use a dab of caulk or sealant on the end of the slide bolt to mark the proper slide bolt hole locations. Then drill holes to set the astragal slide bolt. Insert the astragal fill plug into the threshold and surface mount the keeper strike to the head jam. Close the door and extend the slide bolts to fix the passive door in the closed position. Now adjust the active door jam to get an even weather strip contact between the door face and the astragal at 3 8 to 1 half inch top to bottom. Then secure the jam with number 8 by 2 and a half or 3 inch screws through the pre-drilled holes at the top and bottom. Do not drive screws completely in at this time. Now shim above the screw locations and make adjustments so there is an even margin between the active door and the astragal along the entire length and finish driving the screws tight at this time. Next, open the doors and install the long hinge screws. Drill 1 8 inch diameter pilot holes at the hinges and install the number 10 by 2 and a half inch screws provided to anchor the door frame and to prevent sagging. Next, install the adjustable strike plates onto the astragal, adjusting the strike in or out to achieve proper latching, then tighten the mounting screws. And for additional frame anchoring, Place temporary shims at the center of the head frame where the doors meet. Then pre-drill and insert a screw next to the shims. Through the frame into the header and remove the temporary shims. For patio doors, 
The stationary or inactive side of the unit is set first, again following steps 1 through 5. Then adjust the lock side frame to meet the door surface evenly, top and bottom, as shown in step 6. For additional frame anchoring, shim above the mold post, then screw through the frame into the header at either side of the post. For single in-swing and out-swing doors, set the hinge side of the unit first, following steps 1 through 5. Then adjust the lock side frame to maintain an even weather strip contact along the entire length, top to bottom as shown in step 6. To weatherproof and finish your installation, start by providing and maintaining a properly installed cap or head flashing to protect top surfaces from water intrusion and damage. Then tape and properly seal the top flap of the water-resistive barrier over the head flashing. Caulk around the entire weather side of the unit, sealing the brick mold to the siding or facing, and seal all joints between jams and moldings. Also, seal the joints between exterior hardware trim and the door face to prevent air and water infiltration. Then, place and set galvanized finish nails through the brick mold around the perimeter, or use exterior grade screws if you will be installing a storm door that is attached to the brick mold, and cover all countersunk fasteners with exterior grade putty. Add insulation material to the cavity between the rough opening and the unit to reduce air infiltration and heat transfer. Also, all thermatrue doors must be finished within six months of the installation date for continued warranty coverage. Paint or stain according to Thermatrue instructions. Do not paint the weather strip. It is friction fit and easily removed for painting or staining the door unit. Outswing doors must have all edges, sides, top and bottom, finished. Also inspect and maintain these edges as regularly as you would all other surfaces. All bare wood surfaces exposed to weather should be primed and painted or stained and top coated within two weeks of exposure for the best performance. Also maintain or replace sealants and finishes as soon as any deterioration is evident. For semi-gloss or glossy paints or clear coats, do this when the surface becomes dull or rough. And remember that more severe climates and exposures 